under a quarter so we'll and that thing is like driving me nuts it's five percent and this cable it takes uh, takes a long time to uh, to charge you know and this thing for some reason that's one thing I still have to figure out is um, like why I cannot have that all the time like this like each time I start the truck I have to I have to play with it because I want to see my speedometer like in um, in digital anyway the engine is warm the tires are good 5 degrees Celsius uh, 40F okay how's our pressure our, everything good Sometimes guys come in in here, they do make deliver, make deliveries, and they park here, and you cannot get out. So you now it's nice. I just need to watch to watch my uh, my six, or rather my twelve tires on the rear. truck is longer oh check this out brand new Volvo and on the back of this pure later uh, van it says hybrid electric vehicle for a cleaner for a cleaner delivery I made the corner. And this line X, when I had a Ford F-150, they installed the cover for the for the bed. That's my favorite dental clinic. These guys are open like seven days, huh? Very nice. The last time I, w I went there, my filling fell out, and because it was a big filling, she had to put in some wires, you know, like kind of like what they use with concrete, those metal bars. Charged me 400 bucks, you know, like 430 dollars Canadian for one filling. I'm still a bit upset, so I'm I, I'm not sure if I'm coming back. But <laughs> but they said they need those wires, otherwise that filling, because of the size, is not going to stay in place. You know, all this modern technology, but it's expensive. You know. the longest uh, trip I did so far in this truck um, might as well tell you guys how I managed to book a load and so uh, I saw that email from Google saying that the payment was on the way and you know after sitting so long I was kind of like getting low on on reserves and so I really needed this 
Google payment from YouTube to get to get going and once I got that email from them saying that the money is on the way I started looking like seriously at the load board was before I was just you know evaluating I didn't call anybody and so yesterday already I, I sent a couple of emails and I talked to a couple of people which was uh, Wednesday but it was already late they said they would pass the info to their customers like you know we were talking about the rate and basically what's happening is that I'm trying to find the I tried to find a load uh, going somehow towards Alabama right because of course goal number one is make some money and resume my cash flow after I've been sitting you know since December since the end of December uh, hardly any income and that's the major goal but the minor goal number two is to somehow get to Alabama and pick up that overpriced uh, flip gooseneck extension also known as a flip box and it's sitting there it's paid for back car you know I agreed to include this in my uh, truck uh, contract right so it was financed uh, together with the truck and so I, I posted my truck is available on the load board one posting I did two two postings one was from uh, Cambridge Ontario to anywhere in US and hoping that somebody will offer me a load going south like ideally you know uh, and then the other posting I did for a different date like in the future from Alabama back to uh, Ontario so I thought that if some if I cannot find a load going into US but if there's sometimes there's a very good load coming back you know normally uh, for us Canadians loads from US pay better than loads from Canada well it depends on what load board you're using but because I'm using American load board whereas pretty much all uh, brokers and shippers are Americans right and so for them their psychology is they are shipping something to a foreign country and so they're offering you a good rate whereas uh, on the that Canada you know load link the psychology and approach is totally different because uh, most of the shippers are and brokers are Canadians so for them uh, they pay more money to ship something to US and then loads out of US to Canada on that load board are very cheap and that's why I want to use two of these I want to use American load board for good loads going to Canada and Canadian load board for good loads going to US so this way I can avoid uh, the dreaded uh, backhaul syndrome right I don't want to have any backhauls I want to charge people you know um, fair amounts both ways and so yeah I didn't I didn't find anything going south and I did find a load out of Florida and the guy increased uh, the rate a little bit but it was still like total miles was uh, like 1500 miles empty to Florida and then I, I got a stop in Alabama and that ad adds another you know chunk of miles it just didn't make sense and so so what I what I found instead is I found a short load going in the general direction of Alabama but you know pretty short just like 380 miles so I'm so I'm loading in I'm loading near Toronto uh, tomorrow and then depending on the when I get my permits uh, because I have Ontario right but I need the permits for two other states uh, when I cross the border and so they might be ready Friday they might be ready Monday morning and depending on that that's when I'll deliver and I already talked to Fontaine I said uh, my Fontaine deal I said please make sure yeah the light is still not flashing we are 38 kilometers away from 
and I just passed Flying J. But if it starts flashing and I get scared, there's another truck stop before Woodstock. I think on the right side it's Esso. But I hope I can make it to Woodstock. Then I can do everything at once in one place. I can uh, fuel, I can wash the truck, and I can scale because uh, I had I had hardly any fuel. Remember last time I came here to fly in J and I scaled. I thought I would calibrate the, the gauge, but uh, also my rear axle was locked because I need to scale empty with at least half. 50% of fuel and I want the rear axle to be on the ground like axle number three and that's what the plan is uh, scale with uh, six axles and then this dozer tomorrow it's uh, 60,000 pounds so my gross will be somewhere around uh, 113 uh, and then I have to go to the scale again and I'm gonna scale I'm gonna calibrate the gauge loaded and so this way I will know my weights on the drives and on the trailer with three axles, you know. So at least this will make it, make it a bit easier for me. Yeah, I think we should be good with the fuel. So it's uh, 36 kilometers, which is what? Which is... Um, one third of hundred so 160 so 20 miles so 20 miles and I'm doing 91 kilometers per hour 56 miles per hour just to conserve fuel I'm pretty sure I'm doing seven miles a gallon so to to do 20 20 miles divided by seven I only need three gallons of fuel and I'm pretty sure I have more than that Still on 401, uh, 18 kilometers away, just over 10 miles. So far, so good. The needle is slowly crawling towards the red area, and that's my current, uh, or rather, average fuel economy in liters per hundred kilometers. So right now it's 43 from day one because I only drove locally, so it should go down, I'm thinking somewhere, maybe like 35, because 40 liters, that's when you uh, load it, but I'll see what I can do in the settings, and I'll try to switch to uh, US miles per gallon, because I'm more used to that one, even though I grew up with the metric system, but fuel economy is better I think to understand in in miles per US gallon. beeping and that's the truck stop right there we good First fuel, and then scale. In 400 meters, your destination will be on the left. And then we'll go for a wash. See, you see over here, it's a bit, too, a bit more money. It's 122.9, but at least I'll get points. You know, I'll get a free shower. And I can use that one when I'm in uh, Pennsylvania. 
so let's go get filled up and what that's what i got basically one tank is full and then i put maybe i don't know 10 gallons in the other one so 500 and five or seven liters 507 liters and it cost me 623.3 canadian dollars okay so now we'll go scale with the last axle down and i gotta flip around and go there you see how dirty everything is just put this baby down because now it spins right before it was locked that's why i couldn't put it down when i was uh, scaling at the flying j First way. Truck number. Uh, three zero five. And okay, come on down. I need pounds. Pounds, okay? Yes, sir. It's in pounds. Thank you. Okay, and that's my uh, scale ticket. Eighteen dollars. Eighteen dollars Canadian. And you see, it's pretty close. Uh, I don't remember what was it last time. Oh, wait. I got the old ticket. Yeah, the difference. So before it was 51,640. That's with maybe 25 gallons of fuel. And you see the front axle was 13,480. Now I moved my fifth wheel all the way to the back. And now we have pretty much 50% of fuel and check this out so from 51640 it went to hold on it keeps falling here how can we compare them so that's the left before with the fifth wheel a bit in the slightly forward position and hardly any fuel so now we have 50 percent of fuel uh the front axle increased by 200 pounds see 13.4 13.6 the drives increased by 1500 pounds was 19.2 became 20.7 and the trailer was 18.9 oh actually that was on two axles uh 18.9 now it became 17.9 which i'm not sure how that happened but somehow the the weight went off the trailer <laughs> but anyway so i'm pretty sure that now it's 52.3 uh, and and so the weight increased from 51.6 which is like 400 uh, 700 pounds right and i only have one tank so another 700 pounds so pretty much i'll be exactly at 53,000. so that's what i gotta you know take into my calculation so my empty weight is 53,000 and now let's see if we can uh, calibrate this thing now 
Hello? Do we work? Oh! Yeah, because I'm supposed to uh, do something here. Uh, settings. Uh, settings. Okay, units. Units is English. Okay, we don't need kilograms. Display settings. No, I don't need that. I need this. Okay, I figured it out. So there was a there was another screen where you have to disconnect the gauges because right now it was uh, kind of like taking both readings from uh, the drives and the trailer and it was combining them in like equalizing them you know and there's another screen where you can uh, put like a you tap on it and it, it shows like a um, cross line which means that the inputs are independent and then you can configure the names See now, so uh, input number one is from drives and input number two is from trailer, right? And now I can go here, I can go back, actually, why is it so, oh, and I can do calibration, you see, uh, drive, empty, do you want to enter new calibration data? Yes. Okay, so drive is, that's the new one, right? Yeah, two zero seven two zero two zero. No, wait a second. Two zero seven. Okay, and now trailer empty. Do you want to enter new data? Yes. Uh, seventeen nine six zero one seven nine six zero. 17960 enter and uh, 17960 17960 trailer AMD calibration value yes okay home wait drives oh calibration needed you see 207 Basically, it wants me to enter um, enter uh, when I'm loaded. Now we can turn it off because it's not going to work. Yeah, it's not going to work until I uh, put in my uh, loaded. But yeah, see now at least I have a pretty good idea, right? I have a pretty good idea what I'm going to weigh. And I was using 53. 53Ks and my empty weight when I was, you know, calculating like this dose I'm picking up tomorrow. So that's pretty good. So you see, this was useful. This was useful. Uh, so this way I know what to expect tomorrow. And I'm the last one. I couldn't even enter. There were so many trucks. There so many trucks. Check this out. Like this is the entrance. That's the truck stop. This guy's in front of me. The cock area. And the line goes like this. And that's the truck wash over there. So it'll probably take me an hour to get to the truck wash. Well, it probably took two hours, but finally I'm inside the truck wash. And I'm behind this car hauler guy. And they already started spraying, like only my truck is inside the shop. The trailer is still outside, but... 7 o'clock now, just past 7. These guys are very busy today. Looks good.